Well, this is your Apostle and Prophet and Success Coach, Eddie Tate, introducing you to another night of inspiration, another night of the road to success. And I'd like to thank God for all of my viewers and everyone that will be coming on and all those that will be listening. And tonight we have a very exciting uh, program for you tonight. And as you come on, um, I want you to embrace the principles that we teach. And uh, remember, we're just on the road to success. And I want as many of you all that will um, just embrace this. And I want you to not only learn it, but begin to take heed to it. Begin to walk in the spirit of wisdom. Wisdom is when you do what you have learned. And wisdom helps you to put knowledge in its right or perspective place. And we're going to talk tonight about the ability and uh, to take action. And we're going to talk, uh, incorporate a few principles, other principles into it. And uh, one of the, the awesome things is, is that as we begin to take action, you know, that's when we get results. Now, let's begin our teaching on tonight. Um, you know, when you begin to understand, even I'll, I'll, I'll use a biblical text, and I'll, 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 even in the Bible, it says, Jesus said, I think it's in Matthews, I think it's uh, 7, 24, somewhere around there. He said, and all of those who hear these sayings of mine and do with them, shall be like a man which built his house on a rock. And when the rains came and beat vehemently on that house, and the, and, the, and the rain and storm, the house did not fall because it was founded on a rock. Now it says here that he said, also said, he that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, will liken, be likened unto a man that, built his house on the sand. And because when the storm and the wind came, because that house was built on sand, it had no foundation, the storm wiped it away. Now, I, I want to in, uh, encourage you tonight to understand a principle here. See, you're going to have to get to a point in life that when you hear something, you got to be able to Research it, understand it, you know, and then move out on and do it. You're not going to get anything just reading a bunch of stuff, listening to a bunch of stuff. You're not going to get you're not going to get everything like that uh, done. You, you're going to have to apply it. The law of application. And that's what we're talking about tonight. The ability to take action. And we'll be talking about some points and some things that hinder people from actually acting on the Word of God and acting on success principles. You know, just acting on things that they need to act on. Now, there's a whole lot of factors, and I might not be able to cover all of them tonight, but there is a lot of factors that stop people from taking action. So you're going to have to understand that, that you know, life is not all about talking. You know, not life is not all about talking. It comes a time that you have to put up. They, they say in basketball, you know, you can say what you want to do, but until you put up some numbers and then come a time now, you got to learn how to put up some numbers. That's right. You know, that's a ba that's a basketball saying we have in basketball I'm putting up numbers. I mean, how many points or how many rebounds or how much assistance, how many assists, whatever, putting up numbers. In other words, your performance. How well you perform that night. Amen. There are some of you right now, you're going to have to understand the fact that you're going to have to put up some numbers now. There are some things you're going to have to do. Yeah, there are some things that you're going to have to do. We are moving in a powerful way. Yes, we are. And... God, you know, is blessing, and I have to acknowledge God in all my ways. You know, it was God who have given me this world of wealth of knowledge and told me to share it with his people. You know, you, you got to understand, there were some things I studied, like the stock market, real estate. I studied a lot of that stuff 
because I got tired of being broke. I got tired of getting money and it just slipped through my hands. I wanted to learn how to hold on to it. And one of the ways of holding on to it is building wealth. And that on this road to success, that that's what we're talking about. You know, it is the you know, I believe that the, the even the, the Bible says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and that you'd be in health even as your soul prosper. Yeah. <clears throat> so the Bible lets us know that it's God's will for you to prosper. It's God's will. I don't care how many folks run around in re these religious circles talking about God ain't in the prosperity and all that. I tell them simply, well, you quit going to work then. Quit, quit, quit trying to pay your kids school fees. If, if, if or, or quit telling them to go to college and get a good job. See that? Yeah, I, I, I tell them that. Now, you, you have to understand that in this way and the way we take action, you know, how we act on, you know, it's acting, acting. Now, we always use, we use the terminology of uh, procrastination. Now, procrastination. That's a big one because a whole lot of us are procrastinators in one way or the other. Sometimes people think that they are better than other people because they have overcame procrastination in one area and they're criticizing you for the area that you procrastinate in. You know, that's the thing with judgmental people. I want y'all to understand tonight that I, I, don't, I don't care, you know, what you overcame. If you still got some issues, you got some issues. Am I right? So now, understanding the fact that yes, all of us are procrastinators in one way or the other. In one way or the other, all of us are procrastinators. Okay? So now, let's understand what procrastination is. Now, these are some of the, the uh, this is one of the main things that cause people not to take action. You know, procrastination. Now, procrastination simply means, we know it means to put off something uh, until a later time, put off something that you could do now, but you put it off for later. Anybody hear me? Yeah, I know. And we all have some areas that we do that. Some of us, we procrastinate in the way we eat. We say we're going to do better. And then when the banana pudding come, oh, I'll start tomorrow. I'll start my, I'll start my diet tomorrow. This banana pudding right now is looking really good. <laughs> Y'all start now. But see, starting, putting it off only worsens the matter. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There, there are vital way. God bless you, Arlene. God bless you, Tanya. There are vital ways, and there's ways, because I didn't have my bouts with, with procrastination. And it's something that all of us fight. See, this will stop you from taking action. Procrastination will stop you from taking action. Yes, it will. Now, I'm going to deal with something with this here. See, you got to understand that procrastination simply comes from the root of it is anxiety, fear. Anxiety, fear. Anxiety, fear is a feeling of fear. You know, you know that's what the Bible tells us. Be not careful, you know, in all things. Be anxious, not in other words, be not anxious, but in all things in prayer. So that 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 word anxious means it comes from the word anxiety. And whenever you start getting anxiety, that means you start getting the feeling of fear. Yes, fear is an emotion, but an anxiety it it, it it's a it's a crippling thing because. Uh, it makes you feel fearful. You ever hear people talking about they have panic attacks? That's, you know what that is? A panic attack. It's number of anxiety, fear. Now, procrastination, unfortunately, is connected to anxiety, fear. Somebody said, how do you connect that with fear? Oh, it is. I learned this here. I learned that in, in anxiety, fear... I learned that 
when you get that feeling, you say that you 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 know something you got to do in the morning, or you got to do a little late on, and all of a sudden a bad feeling will come over you. Yeah, uh, and I know some of y'all saying, and then when you say, "Well, I'll do it later," or "I do it the next day," oh boy, the feeling leaves. It leaves. It is no more there. It's gone. Now you feel better. You know what it is? Procrastination is hooked to anxiety fear. And so when you say, I'll do it, all of a sudden that it leaves you. And this is what I'm telling you where the trick comes in at. Because see, the enemy is always trying to mess with your emotions. Always trying. So I found out something about that anxiety fear. You have to do with any other thing. You got to speak against it. You know you got something to do, and all of a sudden that bad feeling come on. You know you say you get up and say, you know what? I'm gonna do this here, and I'm gonna do it, and I'm uh, and I'm gonna do it without no procrastinate. I'm gonna get it, and you start talking, start telling your mind, talking to your mind. So I said, I'm gonna get up in the morning. I'm gonna do what I got to do. I don't care how I'm feeling right now. I'm going and, and, and I'm telling my mind right now that you're gonna do. You're gonna get up and you're gonna feel good about doing it. You're gonna have do it with excitement. Uh huh. You you know what happens then? Do you know what happens? Then what happens is all of a sudden that anxiety leave you. You feel encouraged about getting up and do what you got to do. I'm showing y'all how to overcome procrastination. It's with anything. If you're trying to start an exercise program, see, remember, the, the success part of this is being able to take action. It's taking action. Springing into action. Mm -hmm. Springing into action. Now, this is one of the things that causes people not to take action. See? And then, there's multiple things. And we'll deal with some of these things. But it causes people not to take action, procrastination. So now when I start to work on that, and there's another thing, procrastination, you have to practice overcoming it. You know, if you see a piece of paper laying on the floor and you say, oh, I get it later. No, don't do it because later might not never come. Once again, there we go. That feeling, oh, I get it later. You say, no, I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to pick this piece of paper up right now and put it in the trash. See, you got to become a right now person. Let me give you a, um, let me give you a, um, a thing that I heard. And it's called the five second rule. And, and the lady that was teaching it, I was listening. She said that the five second rule says that, Whenever a thought comes to you, you got five seconds to respond to it. I say you got five seconds to respond. And you start counting. If you have not responded within them five seconds, most of the time you're not. You have to become a person that will learn how to respond now. A right now person. Now, one of the keys to rich people and, and their things as successful people is that they have the ability to make quick decisions, but they're accurate. Quick, accurate decisions. I'm not talking about no emotion. We was talking about decisions the other day. I'm not talking about no emotional decision. I'm not talking about now from anger. I'm not talking about now from any kind of pressure somebody's trying to put on you. Um, no, no. Rich people, they read a lot. They do research. So when the right uh, opportunities come up, they know what to, they know which one they to to take advantage of. So what they do is they do not procrastinate. They simply just spring into action. They spring into action. See, sometimes you got to move while the idea is fresh, while the emotions are there, while you feel. Like doing it. What you feel good about, you got to move, spring into action. Get the paper out. Start writing down the stuff. Start writing all the steps you got to do. Start on it. Start on paper. Y'all see that? Start on paper. Start writing the stuff down that, 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 that you know you have to write down. 
Sometimes you, it's good to think on paper. When you start thinking on paper, it's a great thing because see that paper will remind you of what you have to do. That's why setting goals, getting up in the morning, setting goals. Uh, you, you can set all kinds of goals. You can set six month goal, year goal, month goal, three weeks goal. Uh, I have a year goal. I have six month goal and I have a month, three months goal. I have a month goal. And sometimes I even have a week goal when there's something I need to get done. And and the good thing about it is to write them goals down and be able to look at them. Think on paper. You know. So when you when you when you begin to understand this principle here, it will cause you to spring into action. You have to take action. You gotta take action. I mean you gotta move. Move with ideas afresh. Move. Move what opportunity is there. The only way you're going to do that, you're going to have to have prepared yourself. Do y'all hear me? You're going to have to have prepared yourself. When, when, when preparation meets opportunity, it equals success. I said when preparation meets opportunity, it equals success. Do y'all see that? I said it equals success. Now, I want you to understand this here tonight. We are on the road to success. And on the road, there's going to be pitfalls. And this procrastination is one of them. You know, all within, you know, your human mind. There's parts of your human mind you're going to have, there's areas you got to build up. Now, one of the key things is that and we told you about the five second rule. We told you about the five second rule because you have to make be able to make quick decisions, quick, accurate decisions. This is why it takes you reading a lot, you know, preparing, uh, searching materials, getting knowledge so that when the time comes, boom, I know this. Yes, I'm going to move. And this is for many of you who you, you know, the Holy Spirit is telling you to do things. And, but you got to understand. I mean, even in just natural life, you got to become a quick decision maker, a quick decision maker. And, and you can't have fear and procrastination in doing that. OK, and the next point is you cannot be indecisive. You cannot be indecisive. Indecisiveness will keep you going back and forth with something. You're going to have to be able to weigh matters out quick. If you're going to succeed, you're going to become a millionaire. If you're going to have a successful business, you're going to have a successful ministry, you're going to have a successful company or whatever, you're going to have to not be indecisive, which could lead you to being double-minded. Now, see, the, even the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So it, it's, it's a lot of things that can stream from that. Because when you're double-minded, that means that you have, uh, it, it means two minds. I mean, one time, one minute you want to do something, one minute you don't. You're double-minded. You don't know which mind to obey. Double-minded. Even in the Word, it says a double-minded man don't receive nothing from God. Because one minute he believe him, and one minute he don't. Do this make any sense? So what I want you to understand is that you're going to have to really come to a place to where you become a quick, accurate decision maker based on proper information and research. Mm -hmm. So you, you get stuck. You, you'll get stuck. And you don't want to get stuck. See, my goodness. So, when I began to understand this, and I understood this principle, I understood that it is God, you know, want me to have want me to develop my mind and I got to take the necessary procedures and steps to develop my mind I, it's my responsibility to develop my mind that's why I got to read that's why I got to li listen to tapes and teachings seminars I got to go to I have to go to uh go to uh seminars and take courses anything I can get to train my mind if I want to be a better speaker I got to study other speakers. I got to study the art of speaking. I got to get down and research how I can be better. 
You see that? So, and this is just all to it. I, I got to get my mind into the flow. Get it, get it in my subconscious state. When it gets in my subconscious state, it'll just flow. That's all I try to tell people. That's all I'm teaching. That's why I tell y'all. Y'all can go back and listen to a lot of these teachings over and over. Now, I'm, I'm getting away. I, I put them on YouTube now. You know, I'm sending them to YouTube. Trying to get the, uh, that's what I was telling y'all. I've been trying to get equipment to get the lighting, get the broadcast and get everything better. I'm trying to get these mics so that when I do physically set that studio up, you know, because I'm going to be having guests on them, have people on there, uh, their podcasts, you know, because I want experts to come on to show you areas maybe I'm not all that good in. But there's experts that have done it. And that's who I follow. I follow people that's done, done this thing. This is why I try to be uh, accurate. And this is why I try to be, um, you know, on point. Because if I can be on point, if I can learn, if I can succeed, guess what? I can help other people do it too. All right? Yeah. We, we, so we have to be a quick, accurate, and decision maker. Accurate. Accurate decision. Now, most of you are going to have to learn to understand what, I keep telling you this, what season that you're in. You're going to have to understand where are you, where are you in time. So, uh, sometimes that will determine, you know, the action that you'll need to take. You know, that you, the things that you'll need to do. That's why it takes you have to study your time. Study the season that you just came out of. See, you should have known. See, some people ain't didn't even get the last season they were in. They didn't even know what it was for. Y'all see that? They didn't know what it was for. Then there are some people that uh, they have no clue of what this season is about. They didn't have nothing about last season. They just winging it. They just going through life. Tiptoeing through the tulip saying, well, if God want me to have this, do this here. If it's the will of God, it'll happen. Not necessarily. I said not necessarily. You see that? Not necessarily. No. Not necessarily. If it, 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 it there. Now, somebody said, well, if it's God, you know, that's how religious people talk. You know, if it's the will of God, if God want me to have this to have that, it'll happen. Not necessarily. You know why? Because the will of God is not automatic. Uh-huh. Oh, but he's sovereign. Yeah, he's sovereign, but he's got standards. And he got laws and rules that he put himself up under. The will of God is not automatic. Somebody said, well, apostle, can you prove that? Oh, yes, I can. The Bible said, Jesus said, I would that all men be saved. But are all men going to be saved? You know, would he's always saying, that's my will, that all men be saved. But all men are not going to be saved because all men ain't going to do what it takes to get saved. It's like it's this will for everybody to be healed. But when they have not been in places where healing is taught, how to believe God for it, how to you how to be in faith enough, how to have the, the type of faith that it takes to move God. You know, sometimes they'll sit right up in places and they'll sit there sick because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do y'all see that? I said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now, it you know, that's, what, that's, the, that's the way you get faith is by hearing. You don't get faith by fasting and by praying and all that. No, no. Somebody said, well, didn't Jesus say he'd be at these kind go down by unbelief? And, and that we need that the disciple needs a strong faith. No, they didn't need no stronger faith. They just got distracted. They missed it. It wasn't because apparently the man had seen them casting demons out of other folks. Y'all see that? That's what, why you think he brought them there. How, why do you go to a doctor that you heard good things about? Because you want some results. So the man brought him to the disciples. And he told Jesus, I took him to your disciples. They could not cure him. 
And Jesus, you know, said, bring the boy here to me. He rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit. It was a spirit. It wasn't just epilepsy. It was a spirit behind it. Some of y'all got to understand that there are spirits behind some things. Yes, it is. There are spirits behind some sicknesses. All sicknesses of the devil, whether you brought it on yourself or not, because did, God didn't create none of that. God ain't created cancer. He ain't created HIV. God didn't increase, increase create lupus. He didn't create arthritis, sugar, diabetes. He didn't create high blood pressure. No. That's the result of this fallen system. And the Bible said this here. He said that every, gift, every good and perfect gift comes from God. I said every good and perfect gift comes from God. See that? Now, if every good and perfect gift comes from God, sickness is not a gift. It's a gift from the devil. It is definitely not from God. Because it's not good. Do y'all hear me? So now, you see, and, and they missed it. And, and know how I know? Because when they got outside, had the problem me when Jesus, what did they say? Lord, why can't not why can't not we cast that devil out? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. He didn't say because you didn't have power. But what happened is unbelief comes in, and what unbelief does, it makes you have deliberate actions against faith. It's simple. You stop believing for that moment. And what happened was unbelief got them. Apparently, it got in the way and they stopped believing. I don't know how they get intimidated. I don't know what it was. But Jesus told them. He said, be these kind, go not out of our prayer and fast. And he was talking about the unbelief, not the demon. For they had the power to cast the demon out. He said, these kind. When he said address it, it was the unbelief. So fasting and praying will help you to... Um, it, it, it will help you in an area of faith. It'll help you in an area of authority. And seeing they had authority against unclean spirits. But I'm going to share some with y'all, friend. This is the days why we really, we need to fast and pray. We need to fast and pray. Yes, we do. I, I, I still believe in it. And I don't care how much this new uh, stuff, new teaching comes about. You ain't got to do long fasting and all that. And some of the, the people that teach grace and I'm, I'm for grace. I know I was saved by grace through faith. I, I know, I know I have the grace of God on my life. I know that, but there are some things that you still have to do regardless, but you, you don't do it out of duty. You do it out of love, like tithing. You tithe out of love. See? And so in the same aspect, when you fast, you're fat, you fast, you, you, because fasting, you ain't trying to get God to change his mind, do nothing different. Fasting helps you humble yourself. It's for you. you know what that means? Word humble, the word humble, the word humble, it means to um, get into a place where you can obey God. That's what the word humble means. It doesn't mean, oh, he's so meek and humble. He's so quiet. Baby, I'm seeing quiet people knock your head off. In church, you step on them toes the wrong way. They quiet. But boy, you step the wrong way. You're going to see something manifest that you never thought you'd see. So that don't mean quiet. That's what we've been taught in church. It doesn't mean quiet. You can be the loudest person in the church and be humble. Humble simply means that I'm bringing myself subject so that I can obey God. You know, that's all it means. So fasting and praying, that's what that does. It humbles your soul. Because your flesh don't want to do a lot of things that God is telling you to do. Fasting humbles your soul. Fasting humbles the soul. Fasting humbles the soul. Fasting humbles the soul. So, when my soul get humble, that means that I can um, get in a place where I can obey God. And that is the key even to your prosperity. Do y'all hear me? 
Yes. That's the key to your prosperity. God bless you, Pastor Margaret. That's the key to your prosperity. That's the key, obeying. Obedience is better than sacrifice. What did it say? If you be willing and obedient, then you can eat the good of the land. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm here to let y'all know that in spite of everything that you go through, yes, you're going to have to have yourself subjugated to God. Because when it comes down to making decisions to act quick, when God tell you to do, you're going to have to have your soul humble to make, to move quick, quick decisions, quick. You got to decide quick and do it. But it's going to be based on everything God been telling you. God been telling some of y'all stuff for months that he's going to do. When it comes down time to it, you should not have that procrastinated spirit or nature. I ain't going to call it no spirit. I call it a nature because it's a mindset. That procrastinated mindset, because I tell you, we blame too much stuff on the devil. And we call too many things spirits. Hmm. Yeah, we call too many things spirits that ain't spirits. Some things is a result of our mind need to be renewed. That's all. I told you procrastination is a mind problem. See, a lot of people talking about, oh, Lord, get this lazy demon off me. It's not a demon. It's your emotions. You got to retrain your emotions that if you don't feel like doing something, get up and start doing it anyway. Some of y'all keep telling you some of y'all not mentally strong enough. You're not mentally tough. You ain't got thick skin. Your skin not thick enough yet. See that? Your skin is not thick enough. Now, I want you to understand that in spite of all the things that you that you are believing for. Now, let me say this here. The road to success, it leads clues. It leads clues. The road to success leads hmm, clues. Now, on this road to success, you're going to have to understand that I have to be a good decision maker. I got to be able to think. I got to be able to, I have to be able to have the right relationships. See that? And I have to be able to act quick. That's what most, when people are successful, they know how to act quick. Because they've done so much reading, so much studying, that when the opportunity comes, they recognize it. See, and then sometimes, opportunity don't always knock. Sometimes, opportunity stands by silently waiting for you to tap into it. Do y'all hear me? Now, when I started studying um, health, nutrition, finance, business, ministry, even the kingdom, and I started studying Things, uh, I researched music a lot of, I learned, I self-taught in a lot of areas with music, certain instruments, certain type of production abilities. I was self-taught. Now, because I was self-taught, I could always learn more. I could learn more from people who know more than me in music. I listened to a, a record executive last night. See, as I tell people in music, one thing, like own a restaurant, cooking is one thing, but managing a restaurant is another. One. And in music, making music is one thing, but learning how to maneuver in the business of it is another thing. Because you get taken advantage of. They'll take your stuff, steal your stuff, and be bumping your stuff, making plenty of money off your stuff. And, and and they'll have it legally because you have no kind of publishing or contracting or no kind of copyright on it. They'll take your stuff. And that's why I don't let producers listen. A lot of producers listen to stuff that I haven't copyrighted. Because they'll take your stuff. Because one thing about a good producer, they can mimic the sound in their mind. Next thing you know, say, hey, wait a minute. That sound like my song. Yeah, it is your song. But you didn't have no legal claims to it. One day, boy, I'm going to do something on teaching on legal claims. 
And I'm going to the word of God. Amen. All right, Yvette, how was the revival? How was the revival? How was the service? Glory to God. So, I, I have to really understand the fact that I have to learn to act quick. People who build Fortune 500 companies, they just, they, they understand that they don't have, you know, now it's all right to go home and think about something, sleep on something, think about it. That's fine if you have to do that. But then it come a time that there's times when you have to react quick. You have to move quick. So when you're dealing with even millionaires, a lot of times you got to have, you got to react quick, on time and accurate. A millionaire, time is valuable. So what happens is this here. A millionaire will tell you, if you're going to meet him at 11 o'clock, you probably need to be there a quarter to 11. Because you know why? Because you know why? Because their time is so valuable. And you one minute late, they gone. You say, I was only one minute late. Say, you understand that one minute. That's that's one more minute of my time I had to give you. All right, Yvette. Thank God. Amen. God had his way. That's good. And you you got you have to understand that. I said you have to understand that. Now, when you begin to really look at it, you know, and and all you will be watching this on YouTube, this is a conversion from Facebook Live to YouTube. So if you see me talking in the video, I'm talking to my people that's on here. I'm still sharing the information. So it's very important that I understand these principles. The principles of being able to take action and destroying the, the procrastinative mind state. And we have to also have an ability to override the fear of people. Sometimes the fear of people will stop you from acting. See, they will stop you from taking action because they will form their opinion. And then sometimes because you respect them, all of a sudden, oh my, I shouldn't do that because my mother so-and-so said don't do that. Oh, uh, no, you, you, you're going to have to understand the fact that you are going to have to understand that you can't let the fear of people get to you. Because in business, in ministry, in career, anything that you do, you're going to have to have enough strength in you that it doesn't matter what whoever thinks. I'm going to do what I got to do, and I'm going to make a decision to act quick. Because people say, oh, I don't know, you better use wisdom. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Well, you're not me, and you ain't done the research I've done. I know why I have to do it, and, you, and, your, and your opinion is not going to stop me. You know, your opinion is not going to stop me. So I'm, I'm, go I'm going to, I'm going to. Act on what I need to act on. You can criticize me. You can talk about me. You can do whatever you want to do. I know what I have to do. I know the season I'm in, and, I, and I'm taking action in this season. I'm not going to let this season pass me by. Remember, I told you, a season is a moment in time. A window and a door are moments in a season. People trying to go through them same old windows that's closed. God closed them last season and you still trying to prime them up. You're wasting time. Find the window that's open. But see, the problem with the window that's open is that you feel that if I go through that window, it's going to be a lot of criticism. If I walk through that door, I'm going to get criticized by the people I love. So what? So what? Persecution is a part of this game. I wish I had somebody. Persecution is a part of this game. It's, a, it's part of business. It's part of ministry. It's part of elevating in your career. 
You all hear me? It's, it's even a part of embracing new relationships because people going to tell you God's, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no, no, no. You don't know them people. I wouldn't do that. See, that's their mindset. But God told me, he said, that's a good relationship for you to be in because that relationship is going to help you in business. That relationship is going to help you get all the resource that you need to finance whatever you need. Yeah. I said, no, I wouldn't do it. But the problem is I tell people, you are not none of me. Come on here. And I ain't none of you. Hmm. So I have to learn how to take action. Take action and embrace these relationships. Embrace principles. Oh, see, we never done it like that. New ideas. Quit hanging around all them old antiquated ideas. Ideas that ain't working. Stuff that you did back in 75, 85, 95, 2005. Y'all hear me? This is a new day with new tools. See that? With new tools. A technical age. A age of technology. Of doing things in a whole different way. I couldn't do what I'm doing right now. Um, I couldn't do this here years ago. Couldn't do this in the 90s. The technology was not there. And then when the technology came, the church was still slow about you. Oh, that's the devil. Ooh, that internet stuff is the devil. Girl, you better not mess with that stuff. That demons will get you. And the devil using it for to promote pornography, stealing people money, uh, starting fights online, bullying people, and the enemy using it. But people in church were scared. Come on. Now, this is why in business you're gonna have to be more innovative. You gotta be innovative. You know, you're going to have to be venturous. That's areas you got to go. And I'm going to tell some of y'all, God, God going to tell you it's the season. And sometimes you got to jump and grow your wings on the way down. So, who pops? That don't sound good. Yeah, because see, sometimes in faith, if you stay in that same place, you're going to be stuck. And sometimes you got to jump and grow your wings on the way down. Come on, if God told you to do it, the wings are sprout out on the way down. Somebody said, well, I don't know how to do this here. Jump. You'll grow your wings on the way down. Come on here. Can't be scared in this hour. Can't have no fear. You, you got to be you gotta be able to jump into things in the moments of, and I'm not talking about no hasty stuff, but I'm talking about accurate stuff that God been dealing with you about or, or ideas that you've been pondering in your business and you ain't might have never done it before. Sometimes you got to jump and just grow your wings on the way down. And one thing I like about, you know, you know, and they say you're taking risk. But one thing about it, when God tell you to do something, it's settled. It might look risky. But if God tell cash out, if God tell you to do something, hmm, you move. You jump. Come on, somebody. I'm telling y'all tonight, you're going to have to move. You're going to have to move in accuracy. That's why I've been, I have just been researching, studying, reading all this month. Bless you, sis. I have been reading material. I've been studying the smart stock market more because there's a great recession getting ready to hit a year or two, a year or so. It's coming. I want to have plenty of money to buy them stocks when they go down so low. Or the Apple or whatever, Tesla, when they go down so low, I can just load up on them. You know why? Because the, the, the velocity of the stock market, it go down, it might lose a lot of money. But guess what? It's going to come back up. And if I didn't bought them stocks, at right now, McDonald's stocks is about $232. You imagine if a recession hit. And the stock lose value, maybe down to seventy dollars, or just say think about that. Well, just think if you got a couple thousand dollars saved up, cause them stocks gonna come back and probably gonna come back over two hundred and thirty-two dollars. Many people get rich in bear markets. Bear markets mean it's down like a bear claw. So when you all hear that term, not bear, that means that the market is down. 
But that's the time to buy stocks because they own sale. They don't lost value and they own sale. A bull market is up, but when the stocks are high, I'm going to teach more on that. I'm, I want to dedicate a whole service, but I'm going to have to uh, uh, text some of y'all and let y'all know when it's going to be because I want all y'all online that I can get online because I'm going to start unloading some information about business and about stock, about advancing and and. And how to maneuver in the stock market. How to become a millionaire. I'm, I'm shooting for some things even right now. See. Real estate the same way. A lot of stuff is getting ready to go down and go on sale. Some of y'all going to be able to find property so low. It ain't going to be advertised. You have to get out and find them. They're going to have lost so much value. People going to have moved out of them because they couldn't afford them. See. And what's going to happen is they, they gonna, you're going to get them and they're going to be so low because the folks trying to get rid of them. I'm telling y'all, it's coming a time where it's going to be a lot of motivated sellers for real estate. And many, that's why you need to start saving your money. Come on, start saving your money for those times. See, recession only affect those with a poverty mentality. It don't affect rich people because rich people realize stuff is on sale now. That house that was two hundred fifty thousand. Now, now, now they just they just want uh, ninety thousand for it. You know how much equity that is in that house. That's over hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in that house if you buy it. Equity means that the money that's in the property that you'll be able to pull out if you need it. You'll be able to get it out of there if you need it, or you just let it keep building. And the property is gonna go back, gonna go back up in value. Every year it's gonna appreciate. You see, and if you do get ready to sell, you're gonna make a ton of money. Y'all see that? See, I want y'all to understand. And this the reason why I'm teaching this road to success seminar and, and these road to success sessions is that I want you to understand what it's gonna take you to be on the road. See. See, they, they, they got it set up to where a lot of y'all are just consumers. You're buying stuff to make you feel good right for that moment. And they got it set up like that. See what I'm saying? Well, it doesn't freeze, Pastor Mark. I don't know why they, they're doing that. If it's freezing, y'all, it, it'll, uh, you know, maybe check your settings or whatever, but it, it doesn't freeze. And you, if, if, you, if, if you understand the way rich people think. And they want to get you to buy a whole bunch of stuff that you really don't need. Stuff with credit cards, clothes, and stuff that you really don't need and you can't afford. There's nothing wrong with using a credit card as long as you can pay it. And most of the time, when you when when, when they want you to buy stuff, you know why? Because then you're a consumer. You're the one you're making them rich. You make You make rich people rich two ways. Number one, by working for them. Mm -hmm. And number two, by being a consumer. Think somebody got to buy the products. And we all, cause they consume too. They need toothpaste, toothbrush, and they need stuff too. But I'm talking about unnecessary stuff. They understand in critical times how to hold their money, how to save their money until they can get it converted into wealth, invested or whatever. See, they understand if I don't need a new car, I'm not going to buy them because I got the money to do it. I don't need that right now. I don't need I don't need more no more clothes. I don't need no more shoes. See? I don't need to go to Red Lobster every night. See, there, there's things you got to understand about economics. Come on. About economics. You know, some of my 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 sister some of my sisters used to always call me tight and stingy. I said, no, I'm not tight and stingy. I just got sense with my money. I know what I want to do with it. I don't mind helping you. They said, oh, you're just so tight. No, I'm not tight. Mm -mm. I'm not tight. I ain't stingy. I, I just know what I want to need to do with my money for turning it into wealth and giving it to somebody and because and, and they done messed up all their money is not going to help me. Really ain't going to help them. It's just thoroughly crippling them. Because they never learn how to get good habits with their money. 
If you continue to prop folks up, continue to bail people out, pay their car notes when they done messed up their money, pay their house note. Come on. Do y'all hear me? Do you really understand that it's bad economics? Now, let me share. That's why you have to have quick decisions when it comes to your money. You have to be able to take action to put some of your money in the savings. Let me say this here. First of all, you that are Christians, if you're not no Christian, this might not apply to you. I, I, but I will say something that will apply to you. If you're a Christian, the first person you need to pay is God. Second person is yourself. Yeah, I said pay yourself. Second person is pay yourself. Now, what does that mean? That means that before I start paying all these bills and everything, I take a portion out and put it in a savings account. It's like I got my tithe set aside. I got my 10% or whatever, or whatever percentage I got to save. Next, I'm going to set it aside. I'm not spending it on foolishness. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in some kind of investment, an index fund. Or, uh, um, it, 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 if you just only have an index fund, you ain't got to have a whole lot of other stocks. An index fund is a pool of stocks. If you just if you if you just invest in an index fund or or SP five hundred or whatever fund, you ain't gotta be trying to pick no stocks. I'm gonna teach a lot of I'm gonna teach that y'all. I'm gonna teach that. You you don't you don't you don't have to, you know, invest in a whole lot of stock because that, that has a whole lot of stocks in it. It does the investing for you. So I'm going I'm to I'm tell y'all what the ETF is and all that. See, you know, exchange traded, exchange traded fund is an ETF and it has a pool of stocks in it. And I'm going to tell you the difference in that and a mutual fund. So I, I'm going to give you all the information. I know I've been telling y'all, but I am. But when I get it, I'm going to do it at a, de a time when I can get a whole lot of folks on there. A whole lot of people on there, you know. A whole lot, whole lot of people on there. You know, I generally charge for those kind of seminars. I'm not saying I, I might set it up to where, you know, but see, y'all always blessing. So I don't mind being a blessing to y'all. Now, if I'm out speaking to people I ain't never spoke to, yeah, I'm going to charge them. Yeah, I'm not going to charge them because that, that really, it, it ain't, it's business. I'm going to. I'm a, if I, I got to get an auditorium or stuff, I'm going to charge them. Yes, I'm going to charge them an upfront cost. Because, you know, so that's a different story. But with y'all, I'm going to teach y'all. Y'all my peeps, I love y'all. And y'all always supportive and you're there. Amen. And we're going to get this wealth together. I mean, we are going to get this success together. We're going to walk this road to success together. Y'all see that? Yeah, we're going to walk this road together. <laughs> we are going to walk this road together. And I'm making this here so easy. Now I have a YouTube channel. And y'all got to do just, uh, you know, type my name. A couple of Eddie Tates might come up. But if you know the the, the, the subject, you just type it in and, or, and, and, and subscribe to my channel. Updates will come. Just subscribe to my channel. Hit the, the, the subscribe button. And, uh, you know, y'all will be getting, you'll be able to watch this again right there on YouTube. Or you can go to the page. However, I'm making it so you can constantly hear it. I'm going to have a little nuggets on Instagram. Have some on Instagram and and and, and different things of that nature. Because I want, God, God has put this uh, in me. And I have to now share this with with you. All right. So now you, you have to really understand. You got to really understand that you, your, your success is basically your responsibility. In some instances, how quick you act can determine how fast you will progress. See, God is into the promotion business. 
But God is not into promoting lazy people. Just like he's not into promote like, like companies don't want to promote lazy people, God ain't into promoting lazy people. You know how I know God promotes? In Psalms it says, uh, promotion come not from the north or the south, but promotion come from God. He set one up and he take another one down. Promotion comes from God. Now, and you're a kingdom citizen. God is looking forward to promoting you. Taking you higher in economics. Taking you higher in position. Taking you higher in the realm of the world. He wants to promote you in areas of prosperity. He wants to promote you. He wants you to do well. He wants you to do good. That's his desire. That's his will for you. Are y'all hearing me? Now, I want you to want it for yourself. It's not enough for him to want it for you, but you got the one. You got the one so bad until you don't ignore these principles that I'm teaching. Don't you ignore or any other success uh, coach teaching. Y'all see that? Now, you got to understand that you can't have the fear of people. What the scripture said in one of the books of the prophets, he said, fear not their face. You know Why? Because God knew how intimidating it would be. And, the de and they knew. And, and, and the devil would try to use their faces to intimidate the prophet. I know I've been there. You got folks that sit there and look at you like. They just a, a bump on the law. Look at you like you ain't. You like willy lump lump. Don't know nothing what you're talking about. You preachers, you got to be able to just keep teaching. Keep teaching. And know how to shift when God says shift. See, now you, you, you're going to have to understand this here, y'all. I, I, you know, I, I, want, I want you to know that God's hand is moving in an unprecedented way, in an unlimited way. Now, sometimes to get the unlimited flow of God, you got to unlimitedly give God yourself. Do this make sense? Mm-hmm. By the way, I want everyone tonight, and I'm going to ask everyone tonight, if you can sow a $21 offering, everyone tonight, sow a seed of $21, everyone who can. It's, it's important tonight. Trust me, it's important. Everyone who can sow a seed of $21, ask you to do that. It's offering. You know, it's just an offering. That's all it is. And if you have any other pledge or anything that you have to give, you know, you can sow. Cash app, 21 and cash app dollar sign 21 apostle that's why a lot of people so and you'll see the um the paypal the zelle and the phone number that you need to sell so it is so important that we understand that this is a time now that when god speaks to you you got to get up and move you got to get up and move if God ain't speaking, it might seem like a good opportunity. Sometimes you just got to just hold your peace. Y'all see that? Sometimes when God ain't speaking, don't be, oh, it'd be good. Let me say this. A good idea is not a God idea. Mm -hmm. A good idea. A good idea. It's not always a God idea. I, know, I, I, I messed up fooling with a lot of good ideas and they messed me up. It just seemed like a good idea at that time. They messed me up. Sometimes it is, you know, awesome when you sit back and you wait on God. And you wait on God. Now, when I say wait, I'm not talking about just being lazy. Sometimes waiting, there's things you have to do while you wait. Do this make sense? There's some things you do while you're waiting. That means to occupy while you're saying. That means to, to serve. I know they say they did wait upon the Lord, should renew their strength. But that word wait doesn't mean to sit and tear. That word wait means to be serving like a waiter and a, wait, a waitress in a restaurant. 
See, I might not be able to move out on what it is I want. But in the meanwhile, while the way is being made and while I'm being made. Yes, sir, I said while I'm being made. Sometimes you could think you're ready for something, but you're really not. So while I'm being made. <laughs> Y'all see that? While I'm being made. And then it could be that God is preparing other people that need to be prepared to receive me. Because everybody might now, it might be the will of God for me to go or and contact, be in contact with people, but they might, it might not be time for them to receive me. Do this make sense? It might not be in the time for them to receive me. Hmm. Uh oh. No, it might not be. So now what I have to do is I have to prepare myself. I need to know what it is. What do I have to do? To be ready for what, number one, or what I'm asking for, or ready for what God said is going to happen. What is my responsibility? Am I getting ready? Am I getting ready for the business? Am I getting ready to deal with customer service? Y'all hear me? Am I getting ready to uh, deal with finances, saving, creating more capital? Y'all see that? Creating more capital for the business. Hmm. More economical platform for the business so we can do more. So we can have more financing. Am I willing to do everything? Do I know what I need to do? Have I studied enough? Have I researched what, I, what I'm trying to do? Sometimes we, we talk, I'm just waiting on God. Sometimes no, God is waiting on you to get ready. To prepare yourself. God is a God of preparation. He's getting ready for you to prepare yourself. Do y'all hear me? I said he wants you to prepare yourself. See, I say this. You say that um, he prepared a table. I'm waiting on the table he prepared for me in the presence of my enemy. Are you ready to sit at the table? Are you scared to sit there? Because what people are going to say, ooh. Are you scared to sit there? Some people are actually afraid to sit at the table. <laughs> They're actually afraid to sit at the table, y'all. And then if they sit there, they're going to be apologizing to people. Don't you ever apologize to nobody about your prosperity. They don't know the hell that you went through. They don't know the trouble you went through. They don't know what it took to get you where you are. Don't you ever Y'all hear me? Don't you ever apologize to nobody. See, some of y'all have been in places. Her class from McClendon, people was criticizing about the size of his house. He said, you don't know when I first moved to Los Angeles, I was sleeping on folks' garage floor. You just see I got a big house and think that I'm misusing funds to get it. No, I got everything I deserve. And I'm telling you thing, I don't care what they think about me. I'm going to get everything that I deserve. Yeah. I'm going to get everything I deserve. Every darn thing I deserve. Nobody know the trouble or the things I've been through. See. Cuz some people will think it's unfair. They'll think it's unfair. See that? They'll think it's unfair. I want y'all to understand. See, it, it ain't showing off. It's glorifying God. They just showing off riding around that new Mercedes. No, I'm not teasing you. I'm just glorifying God. Because if it had not been for the Lord, I wouldn't be driving this Benz. I wouldn't be driving this G wagon is 500, you know, G wagon Mercedes truck. I wouldn't be riding around in this Escalade or whatever I want to ride. I wouldn't be doing this here. I wouldn't be living the way I live. Oh, he live on Sugar Hill. Well, I, I wouldn't be living on Sugar Hill if it wasn't for God. I wasn't born like that. I was born dirt poor. Grew up dirt poor. Like so many other people. I just decided to educate myself. No, I didn't get a PhD or a college education. But I educated my own self. Mm -hmm. 
Just like in the music. I I I self-taught myself how to play guitars, keyboard, drums, anything. And I studied the laws of economics. Come on. I studied how to manage money. I studied about products. I studied about investing. I studied about real estate. I studied about business, small business, proprietorship, LLC, nonprofit organizations. I studied about all of it. Accounting and different things. I, I took I studied it on my own. No college professor had to discipline and tell me to read five chapters and give him a paper by Thursday. No. I studied that stuff on my own. I read. I took the time. I didn't wasn't lazy. I just studied on my own. Ministry. I have been to a Bible school. No. I went to one one time just to see what was going on with a person, just to see what was going on up in there. And they was already teaching stuff I already knew. I know sometimes people just want to get the paper to prove that they know it. But see, my idea is this here, when the power of God come up out of me, that's that's my credentials. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. And Paul said, when I came to you, I came to you and I'm preaching the gospel. I preached it in demonstration and power that your faith should stand in the power of God, not in the wisdom of man. I'm not trying to impress people with, with manly wisdom. With humanistic wisdom. I'm not trying to do that. I want people to be impressed by the power of God. And one of the manifestations of the power of God is prosperity. It is, is material wealth. And it's healing. And they knew you had cancer. They knew you were sick on the last stage. And they see you come walking up healthy and gain all your weight. That is the manifestation of the power of God. Yes. Financially, it could be too. They knew you were dirt poor, didn't know nothing about how to be rich, and you weren't raised on on, on uh, learning the stock market and real estate and all that stuff like some of uh, uh, your, your other people were. They know now, they say, you know what? And you, they said, you've been to school? No, I ain't been to school this year. They know it have to be the power of God. But I, but I, but I, but let me just here. But you got to yield yourself to learn. I want y'all to get me tonight up in here. I want y'all to hear me. The road to success. <clears throat> See, I thank God technology has made the playing field fair. The playing field is fair now. It used to be only rich people knew about the stock market and stuff. The playing field is fair now. It ain't no excuse. They have apps. They have everything that you can actually learn how to buy stocks and stuff. And you sit down on YouTube and just study long enough, you'll know what to do and what not to do. The do's and the don'ts. I'm trying to show you. You want to be a musician, a music producer. Get on YouTube and get all, get the tutorials, all the programs, the musical programs that they've made. And you can produce music like a pro too. It's there. It's right at your fingertips. Oh, I want y'all to know that tonight. It's right at your fingertips. Right at your fingertips. So I want y'all to catch that tonight, okay? Yeah. Mm hmm Yes. And to all you that are watching me on YouTube, you're watching me on Facebook Live, I want you to know the opportunity is there for you. It's there for you. I mean, it's there for you, too. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I just want to speak a word of encouragement to each one of y'all tonight. Pastor Margaret, keep your head up. The anointing of God is coming upon you in a profound, more profound way. The glory of God, the anointing. It's a spiritual season now for you. You are increasing spiritually. I mean, even more than what you what you said that where you were at, but you're going way past that. And it ain't going to take you long to pray. You ain't got to pray hours and hours and hours, but you, when you pray, it's going to be enough time that you're going to tap into the power of God. And you might do an extensive prayer, but when you tap into the power of God, I'm telling you, you're getting ready to experience some things spiritually that you have never 
experienced before. Yes, financially, economically too, but all your prayer life and, and, and your dedication is going to open up all the good things. And you have moved into another season, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yvette, the Lord said that I'm going to use you even in a greater way. I'm going to use you in a, in a greater way. The anointing is going to increase even more on you. Some some powerful things happen. You felt a different anointing. You felt a different anointing when you ministered tonight. You felt a different anointing. Yes, sir. And you, it's going to get stronger and stronger. The prophetic was open more. Your anointing was more keener. You could see clearer. Yes. And, and you're going to experience even in a greater capacity. This anointing that's on me is transferring to you. It's getting up on you when you go out and preach. And there's some more preaching doors going to open up for you. There's some more doors opening up. And I hear God say, because your name is going to get out there and people are going to hear about you. There's a powerful deliverance ministry and healing ministry in you. And God is going to bring it forth out of you like never before. And your company, oh my God. That's all I can say. Your company is getting ready to burst out the seams and come forth. And I'm telling you something. The favor of the Lord is moving in a strategic way for you in the financial realm. God said, I see your heart. All the seeds you sow and then the ones you water, you're going to see fruit fall from the ground supernaturally. God said, this is your season for the supernatural, supernatural increase. Ah, ba ba ma ma sha. You know, all y'all sitting up under me, all y'all on this broadcast, it's like y'all y'all are a part of me, and I'm telling you, my anointing is a part of you. Yes, my anointing is a part of you. Anita, this anointing of business is going to get heavier and heavier, and I pray over your body now. I bind the devil in Jesus' name. Touch her, God, in the area of blood pressure, everything. Touch her daughter. In Jesus' name, I loose that anointing. Laba shokotokosa upon right now. In the name of Jesus. There we go. There we go. Mm. Glory to God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. My sister Angie, are you there? Look like I see you up there. Are you there? Glow shot by Mandela. I see somebody at the top of the screen. It's not a picture. I know you have one without the picture. Yes, Lobo, shot. my God, I feel the power of God. I said, I feel the power, the power, the power of the Lord. Mm. He's saying nothing shall be impossible. I feel a breakthrough. And all of y'all that's going to come on and listen to this afterwards, you get ready to receive. Receive the anointing. Receive the, I put this on, okay, sis, but sis, the power of God is getting ready to move. And I see where God is getting ready to blanket you with an anointing of ministry. But God said this ministry is not going to be difficult. The fire in your gifts is getting ready to come forth. The fire. I hear God say the fire. She said, tell her about the fire. The fire. And just what's to Allah Bosha. Mm -hmm. There were some things that this morning God dealing with you about. God said that the fire, he says the breakthrough anointing is coming forth. And I hear God said that I am moving in a way that only I can move, said the Lord. And I hear God said that I'm going to blanket you with my power and with my presence. And the glory of the Lord is going to come forth. Glory to God. Katandala Bosha. Mm -hmm. Glory, glory, glory. And the Lord says, and nothing. <coughs> Shall be impossible. Now for you and your family. Nothing. Thank you Lord. There's a shift in the financial area. Sis there's a shift in the financial area. And there's a personal thing you've been dealing with. For about two weeks. But I hear God said I'm working things out. By the way of a miracle. Said the Lord. Mm, glory to God. Yes Lord. Every last one of y'all that, that that will see this after hours. I want y'all to know that the anointing is moving on your ministries, moving on your businesses. Glory to God. I know my cousin Andre Harris always. I see you always watching, cuz. 
But God told me to tell you, Andre, the fire of God is coming up on you. And God is giving you revelations concerning the scriptures. And I heard God say something about that company. Now, you want to call me because you can. You got my phone number. You want to call me, call me. You on my Facebook page, call me. Yes. Labo shot talk You tell Uncle, Uncle Junior named Beverly. I said, hi, I'm going to be calling y'all guys really soon. But. God is, and even Tony, y'all, y'all, you, you, because you, you, God is moving, and God said the time is to get in the moving with Him, get in the flow with Him, get in the flow with Him, and, and you things you don't understand, you will begin to understand, because God is calling you to a great ministry of leadership, leading people. Yes, there's a pastoral anointing in you. I don't know if you you might not even realize it, but it's in you. I see the ministry all in you, Andre. And God said, don't worry about nothing. I got everything. Thank you. I'm going to work things out for you, even in this time now. And I'm hoping to God that you'll listen to this broadcast and listen to it all the way to the end. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, y'all. I'm telling y'all right now the power of God. I, I ask everyone tonight that can sow at least $21, if you can. If it's a sacrifice, I want you to sow it if you can. I want you to give it if you can. Nothing shall be impossible. The doors shall be open. And I want you to sow in a supernatural way tonight. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, Vet, I, I got you. You know I know what you do. And I want everyone tonight. To sow a seed tonight. If you can sow $21. For a reason why I'm asking you this here. There's a reason why God is laying this on my spirit. To release a seed of $21. I'm calling for an anointing. Thank you Lord God. 21. Things. Three. Three. Abba Shekobo Mosa. Three times seven is 21. God is going, in a threefold way, complete some things for something you are. There's money that need to be recovered. This is powerful, $21. There's money that will need to be recovered, and it's going to come to you. And God is going to complete some processes, some things that's been held up. Each one of y'all, if you can sow this here, if you can believe God, and even though you come on here after hours, you'll see dollar sign 21 apostle. Some of y'all going to come on here after hours. Watch this here. You'll see Zell. And if you ain't, if you don't, if, if you don't know, just inbox me and ask me for the information because I know y'all watching it. But sometimes watching is not enough. Sometimes you need to sow into it. Yeah. You need to sow into it sometimes. You'll sit and you'll watch it. And, and I'm glad that y'all watch because I, I ain't charging nobody for this here. You see this on YouTube. It come from our Facebook. You see this on you. If you see it on YouTube, me teaching this on YouTube. I want you all that will come on and be watching. Be generous and sow a seed of any kind. And I appreciate you. God is good tonight. Yeah. Father, we just thank you for your divine presence. Thank you, Lord, tonight that nothing shall be impossible. Mm -hmm. We command that they recover your luggage. In a few days, I'll be flying out to Texas. I have to go out there to preach out there in Texas again. So God kind of got me moving around the country here a little bit. And I want y'all to be praying few days I'll be out in Texas, but we're still going to be doing our online uh, seminars and, and messages online. All right. And like I said, I have a YouTube channel. It's simply Eddie Tate. I shouldn't have named that because I know I see my son. Yeah, don't If you see music Eddie Tate come up, that's my son. I don't have a music channel yet, but Eddie Tate. Um, but I just want to thank God for each one of y'all tonight. And we are just believing God. And I want y'all to work on yourself. Work on yourself hard. Work hard on yourself than you do on your job or your business. Work hard on yourself. 
Work so hard on you that there be no hindrances in your life. All right. So thank God for y'all. And tonight we just praise God. And I want y'all to be praying. Remember, all you that can sow a seed, do it. Just $21. That's all. I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. Just do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all.